I think um, it's, um, it's good to start by apologies. Um, I apologize for coming late. Um, and that is uh, probably uh, not my doing. Um, you know, I don't know whether it is cross apologies or single apologies, but in any case, I'm here. Um, I'm coming in here, I just had the opportunity of listening to Gabriel uh, in the last maybe three minutes or four. Uh, and I really liked what I hear. Uh, that's very nice, uh, very good of you. And, and I will also congratulate you and, and wish you all the best uh, even as we move on. Um, I didn't have a PowerPoint uh, because these days a PowerPoint is very difficult to prepare, <laughs> as, you will, as you, will, you will understand, I think many of you. Uh, but I like to maybe uh, break what I want to say in two parts. Uh, by the way, how many minutes do I have? Five minutes? Oh, I have to start running. <laughs> um, how many people are new here, please? Uh, new arrivals? So we've got, um, yeah, six people. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, you are welcome to Hong Kong. Um, and I want to say that uh, you've arrived uh, in, in a good place. Uh, at least you have good people, right? So that uh, already certainly are, you know, taking care of you. Um, I was just telling my colleague when we were coming, um, I came back last Friday and we had two conferences, one that ended this morning uh, and I'm traveling out in the coming Friday. Um, and she said, oh, and you managed to come to this event. My point is, uh, this event to me is very much at my heart. Uh, I think this is, for me, this is my primary constituency, uh, you know, in Hong Kong. Thank you, John. Um, and, and it is a primary constituency because uh, it, it is organic. It started as an organic thing. Uh, we started getting, um, and I will must be excused for this, a real PhD student, I think in 2007 or 2008. Uh, I'm not too sure, but it's not really earlier than that. Uh, when I came here uh, in 1993, uh, we were only three Nigerians in the university. Uh, and as you will know, life was not easy. So for those of you who are, are simply coming, uh, you will see quite a few things. Uh, you will feel the place is strange. Uh, you will feel the people are strange. Uh, you will notice, um, you know, a different way of doing things. Uh, you will also see, uh, you know, that, you know, sometimes people don't even realize you are there. But believe me, they know you are there because, uh, like I always tell uh, my kids and others, that we are visible minorities. Um, and as a visible minority, uh, that is the first part of wisdom, if you understand that. Um, I have to take you back to Nigeria before independence, before they said Nigeria was discovered. I'm sure many of you know Mongo Park. <laughs> so when Mongo Park was traveling around Nigeria, he had so many experiences. In fact, at the end, his hair was cut. And the hair, the piece of Mongo Park's hair is actually in a museum in Nigeria, it's in a local museum in Jeba. You know Jeba? Jeba in Kwara State. So um, Mongo Park's hair is right there. Now fast forward now, if Oibo man is walking around Nigerian streets, you know what's going to happen. There will be a few people following him. So I mean, and, and basically becoming interested. So here is the same, except that they see us as, you know, strange people. So, but from what I had here, and certainly what I think uh, we are capable of, and I always um, try to recognize the good work that people have done here, uh, particularly those previous um, you know, graduates who are proudly doing themselves uh, good in, you know, across the globe. Uh, I'm still in touch with quite a few of them, particularly uh, all the previous executives, you know, so in the UK, in the US, in Ireland, you know, and all that. So we have, you know, in fact, I even met one um, about three weeks ago when I was in London, you know, 
so and he was very much interested in knowing what is happening here. Uh, but so in any case, as a visible minority, there are quite a few um, expectations or sometimes things that they will think, you know, I just say it in my own way, they will think, wow, he can also do it. You know, so in that sense, you know, they, so by the time you create a wow situation, you are already in. Because they will see that you are the kind of guy that can basically perform. I give a few examples again. Um, of course, over the years, and I'm not talking about recent examples, we have had few examples where our students basically are coming, are becoming wanted, you know, in terms of um, what they do. Uh, my response to people, I, if, you know, supervisors, even in this building, the last time I was in this building, I was examining a PhD student uh, from Pakistan. Uh, and his PhD thesis was actually about Nigeria, you know, Northwest Nigeria, Kano Jigawa State and so on. But they got me to examine. So when I came in here, I was surprised because he started writing me an email and his name was Usman Mohammed. So Usman Mohammed, Usman is the typical Nigerian northern name. So I wrote him an email. I said, Usman, you have been here for four years and you have not contacted me. You don't know I exist. And then he wrote back, he said, oh, sir, I'm from Pakistan. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so that is it. So, but my point is, it doesn't matter where you come from, but we have that training. And believe me, nobody should tell you that our education system is not good. Our education system is actually fantastic. It's brilliant. I have gone to school in about three or four different countries. This has always been the case. I know quite a few uh, that are basically back, of course, some of them are in politics. But people are doing very good things for themselves. And we, on our own part, particularly in the academia, are actually making Nigeria proud. Because we make Nigeria proud. You know, and, and at any time, um, you know, I don't hesitate to say yes. Uh, this is me. So um, we have to be able to adapt to culture um, because culture is, is really um, very important. There are certain things that we will continue to see as friends. I'm here 30 odd years, but there are certain things that I always see as friends every day. And this is how the Chinese are. Um, the Chinese are, you know, originally inwards-looking people, um, even between them, um, they don't talk to themselves unless there is something that is really, um, you know, linking them together. I, I've stayed in a building <clears throat> maybe 20 years ago. I saw my next neighbor on the day we are leaving that building. And he just came out and said, hey, hello, bye. <laughs> and, and that, that, was, that was really strange. I mean, you expect in Nigeria, when you, you have a neighbor, you guys are always partying together. But that doesn't mean, and, and the guy bumped into me like four or five years later. And he was so chatty. He came to me, you know. But of course, at that time, he already knew, you know, where I was. And so that's basically, um, you know, one of the reasons. So you have to know the culture. If, um, you know, you have to be yourself, you know, from day one. Uh, you have to be able to tell them what you like. Uh, if you are a Christian, you go to church on Sunday, tell them. Let them know that something like that exists. Um, if you are a Muslim, you go to, to Friday prayers, tell them. And when I came to this town from day one, I let them know that on Friday, from 12 to 3 is my time. And they keep asking me why. I say, oh, because, and they ask me, oh, you go to church? I say, yes, I go to church on Friday. So, so those kind of things, and they will remain respectful. And with time, they will start to ask you. And if you have families, let them know you have families. If you have kids, tell them you have kids. And that is the way that you will be able to break, um, you know, that, uh, that barrier. Um, so... From what Gabriel mentioned, I think um, I will just skip a few, you know, that I also wanted to say. Um, but I will also say that if you are, um, I, I don't want to use the word older student, but I mean, or older person here, but those guys who are seniors, 
who are either in year two, year three, or even postdocs, you know, working and so on. Um, at any time, we have to be bold. Uh, if you are sure of what you are doing, defend it. Uh, if you are in academia and you have gone through literature review, say it. Uh, make sure that it's right there and you do it. You, you've done it. Uh, because sometimes the supervisors will not really totally read all what you are writing from A to the bottom. They might pick up one or two points and basically, I, I think I was the one who was really, really, really bad. You know, a few times I had names. You know, I had names. They even called me a killer at one time, you know, so some of the students. Uh, but they found it beautiful because they appreciate it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I got uh, this award. Of course, this is a bit old, but, but that's one of the things, you know, because they trust in you uh, and you put them, um, you know, on, online. Um, finally, um, I think Gabriel also was uh, referring uh, to Nigeria. Uh, of course, I didn't know in what context, but but Nigeria is is our home. Uh, we we basically have no place, uh, you know, like like Nigeria. Um, and these people, again, when you talk to them, they actually know. Sometimes even your supervisors. Even yesterday, no. Uh, yesterday was Friday, on Thursday, even on Thursday, I had five deans talking to me on how they can get more students from Nigeria. And you will think this is strange because the head Hong Kong PFS, is it called it? Hong Kong, yeah. So PFS is actually reducing in terms of numbers, mm -hmm. and we know why, and we know the reasons. But the postgraduate studentship, the PGS, is actually you know, becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, and because the PFS is government, so the universities now are not basically receiving so much support from government because they are changing tactics. I, I think you should know they have BRI, Belt and Road Initiative, so they are getting both money and students from that direction. Um, they also have, of different universities basically have a vice chancellor's uh, money that they can basically use to get you know people. So for them, Africa is still a little bit very far. But those who know, they actually entertain African um, you know candidates. I, I mean, in my department, for example, we have two now. One has justified his coming, but all over in Chinese University where I come from, uh, we actually have a large number now. Um, you know, of Africans. Um, um, and then last week I was in, in Peking University, the same thing. Uh, they were basically coming to talk about Nigerians, you know, in particular. Uh, Peking University at the moment have about 150, uh, you know, Nigerians, both PhD, you know, and masters. And they are still, um, you know, they are hungry for more, right? So they are looking for more. So my point is, people are looking at us. They know who we are. They know what values we actually hold. But sadly, for some of us Nigerians, we actually don't look at ourselves you know, in that direction. Nigeria is the only country, and believe me, I will repeat, it's the only country where you land at the airport, Lagos, Kano, or Abuja, the taxi driver that you will take will be abusing Nigeria for you until he drops you. He will tell you how Nigeria is bad, he will tell you how you know, his kids are not in, this is not now, not in this government. This happened long time ago. Um, and I was writing about that. I was telling, have you, some of you have seen um, the movie, uh, Namaste Wahala? Yes. You've seen Namaste Wahala? Yes. You see, you saw the Indian woman with the taxi driver? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. So, so that's basically um, what they do. No country on earth. You will take a taxi driver and the taxi will start abusing. There is no country. If you have one, just tell me. I've been to over 40 countries, uh, maybe a bit more, uh, not just to go and come. Uh, if I have not stayed in a country for seven days, I don't mention that country. But, but you know, this is what they do. The first people to talk to is the taxi driver. My kids, they know. Immediately we arrive, they say, now dad will start talking. And I will, I will not stop talking until I get all I want from that taxi driver. So my point is, we are not doing justice to Nigeria. So let's try to be very good ambassadors 
are you going to Nigeria? It will not reduce you, it will not diminish you, it will rather add more you know, value to you. Um, I will finish, but I have to say that uh, in the 1990s, we were very proud here, very, very proud. Um, if you remember Kanu, the football player, uh, Kanu's jersey with the name Kanu was, I think till now, has the record of the number of t-shirts that were sold, uh, you know, in Hong Kong. And that was after uh, 1994 World Cup. And then uh, 1996, uh, they won the Olympic uh, gold medal. Uh, if, I still watch those matches. If I am in a you know downward mood, I watch those matches. Then it all comes back. So, so they know Nigerians, and and, and and they know us for quite a few things. Uh, but of course, the tide is changing. But we will be the engine that will basically reverse uh, you know the tide. Um, I think I would like to stop here and, and I will basically entertain Q&A, so if you have questions and answer that.